No, I don't waste no time How you doing guys and welcome back to a new video. Now for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Joshua Daniel George. I am a digital marketer and an online coach. I have my own advertising agency where we help mainly e-com stores and meal delivery services get more customers and more sales through Facebook advertising. And I also have my own coaching business where I teach you guys on how to do the same. So how to start your own agency, how to pick a niche, how to do the outreach to the clients, get the sale done so that you've got the clients, how to get results for them and so on and so forth. And uh, it's been a while since I've done a Q&A on YouTube, to be fair. Um, obviously, I have got my own Facebook group, which is completely free if you wanna join it. It's called the Lifestyle Design Community. If you go on my YouTube channel, it's actually in my cover photo. Um, it basically says, you know, um, free social media marketing beginner course. If you join this group, which you actually do, you get a free beginner course. So feel free to check that out. I go live on Fridays on my or in my Facebook group. And that is also the reason why I no longer do two videos a week on my YouTube channel. Um, just because the engagement is good in my Facebook group, to be fair. But I thought let's switch it up again and, uh, you know, do a little YouTube Q and A. Um, I put this Q and A up on my Instagram. For those of you that don't follow me there, uh, feel free to do so. It's at Joshua Daniel George. Um, so let me just get up the questions. I took a few screenshots. Where are they? There we go. So in no particular order, um, to be fair, quite a few of you guys did ask a bunch of questions. So I'll just pick out the ones that I think are relevant and uh, ones that are basically you know, good for the video. So uh, let me see, we'll start off with here. Question from Satish, is cold email the best method to get from clients? Um, so I'm, I'm guessing to, to get clients, not to get from clients. In my opinion, there is no best method of outreach, okay? At the end of the day, what we need to do is we need to build a relationship up with our potential clients, uh, and of course with our clients as well. And however way you do that, you just need to pick a method that works best for you. So for example, if you are really good at cold calling, then by all means, start cold calling these, these companies. If you're very good on Instagram, you know, you've got a big personal brand on Instagram, you've got a good social presence, good engagement on Instagram, then utilize that. Start using your Instagram to your benefit. If you're very good at LinkedIn, you know, you're always active on LinkedIn, you're putting a bunch of posts up on LinkedIn, and that is where your network lies, by all means, go for LinkedIn. There is no perfect method. There is no secret source to outreach. You, need, you just need to pick one that works best for you. For me, personally, cold email is a very powerful method of getting in touch with business owners, building up that relationship with business owners as well, and basically getting your foot in the door. What we do now, just in all transparency, is we run ads to get clients. So we run ads to get calls booked for our agency, and then from there, you know, we build up that relationship up and we sell them on our service and we rely very heavily on referrals. So we've got a few very, very big um, brands that we work with and they also you know, send a lot of clients our way. So those are our two main methods of outreach now. I do still do cold email from time to time and cold email is something that you know, really, really helped when I was building up my agency. It will get to a point where you need to basically decide what you leverage. Do you leverage your time? or do you leverage your income, your money? Because you know, if you've got no money, then you, obviously you can't run ads. If you haven't got the time, you obviously can't do outreach. So you need to pick which one of the two you actually leverage. For me, back then, obviously I had to leverage my time. You know, I couldn't spend thousands a month on Facebook ads, so I started doing cold emails. Once I built up my agency to a certain extent, I switched from cold emails. Obviously there was a bit of an overlay period where we did both, but then we went from emails to Facebook ads, and that is how we now run uh, the agency. In terms of which one is better, obviously ads is the more scalable out of the two. But at the end of the day, in terms of what I've noticed and experienced, results-wise, about the same. Okay, so we got just as many clients from the ads as we've gotten from the emails over time. Uh, there isn't a difference in quality or anything like that. Obviously, when you run ads, you've already got that authority position because they would not have been able to get in touch with you if you know you weren't good at what you did. So you could say to them, like, listen, the only reason why we're talking is because you came through my ads, which means that Facebook ads work. You know, I know what I'm doing. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been having this conversation. And they've come to you. So you can also ask them on the call, you know, 
why did you book this call? If you ask that when you send an email saying, hey, let's hop on a call, they book the call and you say, well, why did you book this call? Obviously, they're going to say, well, you, you asked me, right? So there is a bit of a, an authority position when you run the ads, but cold email works just as well. So I highly recommend you do cold emails um, when you are just starting out. Uh, let's see, second question from Stephen. What is a personal related goal and a business related goal that you want to achieve this year? So personal related goal is a very good question. Obviously with everything that's going on in the world, you know, with the pandemic, etc., a personal goal would be to start traveling again. So in 2018, I was in a different country every single month and my agency was not doing half as well as it is now. Obviously because I'm stuck at home, you know, there's not much more that I can do than actually get to work. So obviously it has been, um, you know, I've benefited from the pandemic in that way. Obviously as well with all of this, um, everyone's also making tra the transition to online, uh, ordering online, ordering food online, ordering clothes online. E-commerce as obviously, you know, in, it, it is in high demand. And then, you know, if you're running ads to it, you know, it's easy to close clients nowadays within the e-commerce space because of what everything is going on. Um, but with that said, in 2018, that was probably one of the best years I've had in my life. You know, I went, like I said, in a different country every single month. I went, I was, I was from Canada to America to Bali, Indonesia, Singapore. I, I was literally all over the place and I loved it. And that is basically what I want to try and do this year again. Obviously, we're already in May, you know, five months out of the year already gone. Haven't been anywhere yet, but hopefully, you know, that will change in the near future. In terms of a business related goal, I am in a very good place, you know, uh, mentally, emotionally, um, you know, with the business, we're in a good place, we're making good progress. I can see the progression made every single day. I think um, if I have to give like a financial goal, uh, like as a financial goal to it, I think if we can hit 250K this year in revenue for the agency, um, that'll be a good year for me. And uh, that'll be something that I'll be very happy with, very proud of, because that's something that I've never been able to achieve before. And uh, I feel like with everything that we've set up this year so far, that is actually within reach. So um, yeah, ambitious, but achievable. Uh, let's see, then we've got, uh, I don't know what the, what your name is, ADB129, what types of insurances do you need for an agency, if any? Um, good question, and I think it would depend on the country you're in, what kind of business you've set up. Um, so basically, I've, I've had everything. I've had a, a holding company, I've had a limited, I've had an LLC. Um, now I've got the Dutch equivalent of a sole proprietorship just because it's easier tax-wise um, and there are a lot of benefits to it. Um, but in terms of insurances and stuff, like I said, it, obviously I'm not an expert at that. You would need to consult you know, someone within your um, country and you know who has experience and um, you know understands what's going on within the country within the rules and of course what type of business you're at so unfortunately I can't really answer that question because I'm not I don't have the knowledge basically um, what else have we got let's see another question here what is your MRR monthly recurring revenue for just your agency excluding your coaching program and uh, here's a fun fact my coaching program actually is a very small percentage of my monthly recurring revenue or monthly income because the agency does all the heavy lifting. So I think for this month, May 2021, I think we're going to hit 28K monthly recurring revenue with the agency. Um, exclude, like I said, the coaching program, it's literally, so we've obviously got a few tiers now within the coaching program. We've also got a high level coaching program that we've just released, but I'll gain like maybe two or three coaching students on a monthly basis for Lifestyle Design Massey, which is like the beginner coaching program. Um, and then obviously we've got the high level program, which we've just launched, which is one a month or something like that. Uh, great thing is it's both organic. You know, obviously a lot of you guys will come through my YouTube channel to join the Facebook group. You'll see the benefits of working with me in the Facebook group. And then from there, you will have a look at my program. Um, so, you know, we don't run ads or anything for it. We can't run ads actually, because uh, my personal brand is banned on Facebook. Um, so yeah, that's where we're currently at. Um, and like I said, you know, the coaching is maybe an additional four or five K a month or something like that. So it's definitely nowhere near, you know, the, the income that I'm generating from the agency. Um, and that's just because I really do focus on my agency. You know, it's something that I very much enjoy doing. And um, I don't want to be one of those people that just coaches the business model, but doesn't actually run the agency. I feel like those people, like, you know, you guys on soft, right? You can see right away who is trying to do that and, 
you know, who is just teaching the business model rather than, you know, teaching it. And I also think that my coaching program benefits from me actually having a agency because, you know, I am in the trenches like you guys. I know what changes are being made to the, you know, the industry, what's going on in the industry and what changes are being made to Facebook, of course, as well. So I um, hope that answers your question. Then we've got another one from Akash. Hello, sir. What would you suggest to do if you are from a country where English is not the first language, but you do have the skills and experience in Facebook advertising? Also, would you change your first name to deal with stereotyping? Um, so first of all, in terms of the name thing, your name is Akash, one of uh, like a, a close friend of mine who is UK based and probably the best media buyer in the UK at the moment. Um, you know, he works for brands like Lacoste, etc. Like this is this is a big, big, big whale in terms of like a media buyer um, in the UK. And his name is Akash as well. So the name, I wouldn't change the name in any way. And it's also something you should be proud of, right? You should be proud of your name. You should be proud of who you are, where you're from, etc. I wouldn't let anything like that sort of hold you back. Um, with that said, when you mentioned the first language thing, I'm I'm guessing that that means that you have a strong accent. Um, so, you know, people can tell where you are from and that might work, um, you know, to your disadvantage. If you notice that and if you notice that you are not being given a fair chance on sales calls or when you record Loom videos, then what you can actually do is hire either uh, a closer or just like an in-house sales guy to work together with. Because as you mentioned, you've got the experience with Facebook advertising. Um, so why not you just position yourself on the back end, you run all the ads for the agency, uh, for the clients, etc., and you've just got someone on the front end that is the sort of face of the company, if you will. They take all the sales calls, they do all the outreach, etc., and then you know just give them a percentage, a um, a set fee as a wage, etc. Or you know if you are still in the trenches, you're still getting started with your agency, just do 50-50. Um, so that is sort of my two cents on that. Um, another question: How is your property? Question from Jake: How is your property business going? Why don't you talk about that more on YouTube? Um, not really much has happened to be fair in terms of the property. Um, my, so the one property that is finished, quick side note, you know, what I do is I purchase buildings. I don't purchase buildings. I wish, I wish I purchased buildings. I purchase units within buildings that are getting renovated. And then once they are done, I will sell them or uh, sell them. I will rent them out as like a buy to let structure. Um, the one unit that is finished, um, being fairly quiet to be fair because of the pandemic, because of you know, um, not a lot of people going to the UK at the moment, especially the city where it's in Liverpool. Um, and we also had like a leak, so we had to like redo all the floor and etc. The other two apartment uh, units are not finished yet, so that will be another year, I think, at least. So not much to talk about, not much to show either. Um, maybe when I go to the UK next, I'll show you guys around, do a little video on it. But um, to be fair, I'm also still very much a beginner when it comes to all of this. So I will document the journey when it comes to that point, but I'm in no way a property expert or anything like that. Um, another question here, CBO or ABO for Ecom top of the funnel? It will largely come down to testing. Um, for a few clients, now we've actually switched to ABO, which stands for Ad Set Budget Optimization. Um, and it works really well, especially when you're testing out a bunch of different images. We'll just give every single image um, basically one times the CPA. So if the cost per page is like $20 or something like that, we'll give every single image $20. We'll run that for three days and then we'll see at the end of the three days which uh, images got purchases. The ones that didn't, we'll kill off. And then what we'll do is with the uh, images that did get purchases, we'll move them to an ABO, uh, CBO campaign and run those on CBO. But CBO, campaign budget optimization is still something that I'm a very, very big fan of. Um, let's see, that's not, that's not, an, yeah, okay, so last question here. What to do if you have a call schedule with a company that you know is either too big or too small for you, do you take the chance or cancel? Um, good question, I, honestly, good question. What I would do is I would take the call regardless for a few reasons. Number one, you can refine your sales skills Number two, you never know where that conversation will lead to. 
Like what you could do is you could have that conversation, you can have that call with that client, realize, okay, this client is too small, but they might know someone that is the right size for you. So let's say they're at 10K a month and you only work with clients that are doing 20K a month. You say, listen, at this moment in time, we are not a right fit. It wouldn't be fair on you because I wouldn't be able to get you a fair return on investment because my retainer is just too high at the moment. If you are at that point where it does make sense to work together, then by all means, feel free to reach back out. I would love to you know, discuss that further. Uh, but at this moment in time, we do actually have the capacity to take on more business. So if you know anyone, maybe a friend, family member, relative, someone within your network that is at that point and could benefit from our service, I would love to speak to them. And you'll be surprised how many people actually, you know, will refer you on to other businesses, despite the fact that you didn't actually work with that person. Just by being genuine, just by being transparent and upfront with them, um, you, know, you never know where that can lead to. Then in terms of the bigger businesses, bigger does not always mean that they have everything, um, you know, in order. You know, I have... I have seen and analyzed businesses that are doing multi, multiple millions, you know, a quarter, and, you know, their whole ad account structure is atrocious, and, you know, it literally just needs a complete revamp because you just have no idea what they're doing. They've had multiple agencies work at it, and, you know, none of these agencies have been able to pinpoint what is going wrong. And, like I said, these are, like, million-dollar companies and million-pound companies, and they've just got no idea what they're doing. So if a company is too big, that does not necessarily mean that you can't help them, okay? So always take the call, always take the opportunity, even if it's just to refine your sales skills and see if there's a referral that uh, you could, you know, get on the back end. But anyway, that is, uh, that is it for the questions for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got something out of it. Like I said, if you have not checked out the free Facebook group yet, feel free to do so. It's got a free beginner course for anyone that wants to get started with social media marketing. And, um, you know, there's a bunch of resources there, like scripts, templates, etc. in there as well. And uh, like I said, I go live as well on, uh, on every single Friday. So feel free to check that out. For now, I'm going to wrap up this video here. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.